This week on Scam School, you'll find out why no bicycle is safe. It's because your locks suck. This episode of Scam School brought to you by Domain.com. Ever notice that all of our best episodes start with the following disclaimer? Do not use this for crime. Welcome to Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. Hello, beautiful citizens of the internet. I'm Brian Brushwood, and we're back at the Moon Tower Saloon to find out why your bike is not safe. It's because your luck is bad, and you should feel bad. Uh, all right, here we go. Awesome. All right, back again at the Moon Tower with Jay Gore and Jason Murphy. And Jay Gore, you showed me a while back something uh, that I didn't realize it was this simple, but you said that pretty much any bicycle lock you could do with no special equipment whatsoever. Yeah, these wheel style combo locks are really easy to decode. Anything like this, a, a bicycle lock, even a luggage lock or a briefcase or a filing cabinet, anything that's got these dials to dial in the combo, probably gonna be vulnerable to this attack. Now you don't mean dials like on this, cause I guess this is also kind of a dial thing, right? Kind of, I, I don't think it works on that particular one. But anything where there's a male and a female part and you spin the wheels in order to, you know, to match the teeth. Yeah, like the opening uh, device would be separating somehow. So in this case, this would pull apart to open. Got or it. in a briefcase lock, you push a button to the side and it slides sideways. That type of mechanism we, we can decode pretty easily. Let's try this, walk me through the mechanics of why this works and how you can do it without knowing the code at all. Yeah. And then we'll see if the two ace safe crackers here are able to bust that open. This is actually very similar to standard lock picking in that we have a binding force that we're applying to the tumblers, or in this case, the wheels. Whoa, hold on, professor. <laughs> Let's talk about the, the binding force here. Sure. However you would normally open the lock, in this case, it's gonna separate uh, like this. We're going to apply a force like that. So I'm holding outward on the left and right side. Oh, I get what you're talking about, because in lock picking, you want to have a tension wrench that you put a little bit of tension on, and yeah. then you go through, and as if you have a finger, you, you poke up each thing, and then once you get one in the right spot, it sort of stays there, and yeah. then you look for the other one. The ones. reason it stays there is because it's binding up against the side of the lock, so it's kind of sticking, and okay. you're able to push it up, and it'll click and set into place. So in this case, you're pulling it apart, and, oh. and inside, this is just like uh, four teeth, and then each of these wheels have a gap that you line up all the gaps in the teeth and exactly. go right through. Yeah, so, and one of those gaps is gonna be closest to the locking mechanism from the rest. So when we hold this pulling force, we're gonna bind up uh, or make tougher to spin one of these four wheels. So our first step is to figure out which of the four wheels is binding. If I push on these, these first three are really easy to move. They spin pretty freely. This fourth one is not going anywhere, right? So, because I, I gotta assume like nothing is perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you've got the teeth pulling against the wheels and uh, of the four wheels, this one, the very first one is the one that is pulling the hardest on. Yes, exactly. Which means that's the first one you can lock in if you figure out where the gap is. We can think of it as that is the only wheel that's holding it closed at that particular second. If we got this wheel out of the way, then a new wheel would be the one holding it closed. Got but it. But for now, we're just attacking that one wheel. So I'm gonna reset these all to ones. We know that the fourth number here is the binding one. It's tough to spin. Right. Our goal is to transfer that binding force through from the fourth wheel to the third one. Got as it. soon as we see this third wheel get tough to spin, we know the fourth one was correct. So at this point, uh, the fourth wheel being difficult to spin, you just sort of try one, two, three, four, five, six, and then each time you wiggle the third wheel to see if that one's having a hard time exactly. spinning or not. So I'm starting it at one here. Let's try that third wheel. It's still freely spinning, right? Yep. So let's move on to the next number, two. Still freely spinning, move on to three. Does the difference feel like black and white? There we go, yeah. So now suddenly this third wheel is not going anywhere. It's locked up just the way the first one was. So theoretically the first dig or the last digit is four. Yeah, pretty right. confident here. This, this uh, last wheel is gonna be four. I don't normally get these uh, ideas so easily, but I feel like maybe Jason and I could take this on. You wanna give it a shot? Yeah, here, first toast me though. All right. Why don't we just give our bicycle to the first shifty-eyed hoodlum <laughs> that comes along? <laughs> Someone's coming. There's someone in the building. A domain squatter, going from door to door. He's already on the third floor. He's asking for somebody to give him a domain. Sounds like... Uh, no. Uh, no. No, he's trying to get daredomain.net. But that's my name. People call me the Dare Domain sometimes. Look, there are some things I haven't told you about myself, domain squatter. Uh, I mean, mostly because you're on the third floor and wouldn't be able to hear me anyways, but I have the supernatural power of registration. And believe me when I say I will stop at nothing 
to snipe that domain right out from underneath you. That's right, domain.com. All right, look, I don't need eyesight to see all the trust and credibility that comes with .coms and .nets. Although, you know, maybe if I get this mask out of my face, oh, now I can see just fine. Oh, good thing too, because otherwise I would have never known that code Scam School gives me 15% off. All right, Murphy, you're playing for Team Scam School here. We know the last one is four. Talk okay. us through it as you're doing it. All right, so I'm holding and pulling the outward force, right? Yeah, this the third one is definitely harder to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess. Oh, you... well, okay. So I start. Let's let's start with one. Yep. Start with one, right? And then we're gonna turn the second one. So that all feels loose right now, right? Uh, ish, yeah. And it looks like it might be sticking a little bit, but okay. Yeah, try moving on you and see what? if I'm it gets gonna, any I'm easier. Just to get uh, an idea of how uh, loose. Well, it is. Well, I guess that's a good point because there is the chance that whatever number you're on happens to be the right yeah. one, and it looks like it's spinning a lot easier on the two than it did on the one. So maybe yeah. one is the number. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I don't have any uh, basis for comparison. Yeah, you know sure, I mean? sure. I'm astonished how much of this really is just entirely by touch. I, I would imagine that that if you were non-sighted, lock picking would be a pretty good game to play. Absolutely. Austin has a, a pretty big blind and deaf crowd, and we've actually had some of them come out to our meetings before and had great luck just picking locks within like 15 minutes. That's amazing. So to, because to them it's all intuitive, like like the the sensitivity in their fingers and learning how yeah mechanics they, they work. might be even have a better advantage at it than us. Yeah. They all feel loose. <laughs> all of them feel loose. <laughs> okay, one one is actually stickier. Okay, one is one okay, is stickier. Okay, so, so you're fairly I'm, convinced yeah, that, that, that looks that one four. Here. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty convinced. Three. So now you just do an entire lap, four, right? Five. Get it, to get it, to get it, to get it. No. Oh. Okay. No. So that means you're wrong on one of them. Sometimes you'll have to reposition, uh, like let off the the pressure and then put it back on so it gets a good well, and, grab on it again. And that's the nice thing about this is you can let off the pressure and it doesn't ruin your work. Yeah, so unlike far. normal lock picking, you don't actually lose all your work if you let off the pressure here. The Russians are coming, man. All right. All right. I'm passing I, it over. I, Ivan Drago's about to steal his bike back. So you're confident on the first two. The third yeah. one we don't know. Okay. So real quick, if we get it's this, tough because I got these big like. Gorilla fingers. They look like big, strong hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so this one. Wow. Gotta be careful to get it right on the number because if you're off crooked a little bit, you're not going to feel the sticking. And it's tough because when you're maintaining the pressure like that and you're turning the knobs with your fingers as you're pulling, it's easy to kind of knock the other numbers that you've already got yes, off of their alignment. That's what I kept doing. That's my excuse. Okay. I think uh, I got somewhere. Yeah! Did you get it? Last one is hard. So hold on, I'm just gonna keep spinning. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Three, four, one, four, right on. Nice. Uh, well, now I'm terrified, and I'll never leave my bicycle alone. <laughs> Thank you, Jaguar. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> You know, we got to give huge thanks both to Jay Gore and to the Longhorn Lock Picking Club. Check them both out online and on Twitter. Speaking of which, you and I should be best friends at Twitter. I'm at Schwood. There is no C in Schwood. And of course, you should join us next week because we are going to unveil the first ever Scam School free to play app. We will never charge you. All we need is your name, social security number, your phone number, your mother's maiden name. And maybe your old passwords, you're not using them, right? Yeah. And then you go through and as if you have a finger, you, you poke up each thing, and then once you get one in the right spot, let's talk about the, the, the binding floors here. Sure. So it goes through us. <laughs> mm, I have no excuse. I have dainty magician's fingers. Oh, it's that's definitely sticky.